Hey guys, welcome back to Ask by Bottle Flip and today we got a very interesting and important guest, the CEO and founder of Augustus Media, he knows them as Love in Dubai, Smashy, Mr. Richard Fitzgerald, thank you so much for coming today. Thanks a lot, I'm a lovely fan of you from afar, so glad to be on the show. And to my right I have Karim Tarajah, the founder of Golf Crypto and Ghazi Yaman, the co-founder of Bottle Flip Agency and then you know him as Vitamin G. Can I call you Mr. Fitz? You can. Okay, Mr. Fitz. Who is Mr. Richard Fitzgerald? Uh, I'm just a guy. <laughs> another person, another individual. Uh, I'm Irish. I grew up in Ireland in a small little town, small little parish. I lived in Dublin for, went to school near Dublin, uh, went to university in Dublin, and then uh, worked in Dublin. Uh, I'd spent a year in Germany. I lived in London for a couple of years and then I moved to Dubai 10 years ago. So given all the accomplishments you've made in your life, if you're given the chance to go back, what will you change and what will you keep and why? I had no regrets, like I don't look back and change things. I think we're talking about generation gaps, like given my age and yes. you guys' age. And I think like some of the stuff like, you know, I didn't really embrace learning when I was younger. Like I would just, you know, like escapism and like going out and having fun and stuff like that. But now I embrace learning more and I kind of have a bit more confidence now. So I take action more, a bit more assertive, like in, in all parts of life. So those type of things. But, you know, talking about like accomplishments, like, yeah, I feel like I've got more kind of identified accomplishments now, like in the last sort of decade and, and stuff. But so, but I was learning a lot before, but now I feel like I have, I, oh, I feel like myself, I'm like someone who is a, a professional footballer in their 20s. I act like that now for business. So I don't take holidays. I don't like, I, I, just, I just train work-wise. Like hustle, 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 yeah, hustle. Yeah, well, just work, like, yeah, hustle is, is a term that's, you know, that's kind of like ruined basically, right? Like, but I just work because I'm passionate about it. Like I'm, I read like all about new media. I just embrace it. I love the culture. I love that we've got loving in 10 cities. I want loving in 100 cities across the Middle East. I love, I love all that stuff, right? Not necessarily to be the biggest and best because I don't think you can be in media anymore. It's just, I like building, right? I like that we have this big studio here and it started in a laptop in a co-working space. Congratulations on years that. Ago. Thank you, and, but like, but that's just, that's literally true opportunity cost and, you know, like, it's literally true, I work six days a week and I read one day, that's it, and I train seven days a week. Uh, when was that mental toughness, when did you develop it, and how were you able to sort of move all of that mental toughness to your career, to your business, and what changed? I always had a little bit of it, yeah. but it then, I just get better. It's self-awareness, isn't it? It's like, a, almost, like it sounds arrogant to say emotional intelligence. Like, oh, I'm emotionally intelligent, but like, I'm I'm not. But I I'm aware of it, and I've read books on it. I've had people help me, and then by identifying that in many different areas, then you, you start consuming more. I, I consume books about ultra runners and things like that, and about great people and things like that, and. You know, in my office upstairs, I have photos of what I call Goat Mountain. Like Kobe Bryant used to talk about Goat Mountain, even though I didn't really follow basketball. But he would go, he would say he would go up to the Goat Mountain where the people who he looked up to are there. They're the greatest of all time, not actual goats, but you kind of think of goats at the top of the mountain. But like they're hanging there and you just ask them questions. So what would they do? And I think like just embracing that sort of thing, you know? And given all of your career and your fitness track and everything uh, what are the three things that you value the most you know again it goes back to like linking fitness and business together like I think those values that I've come up with are help us perform this business well this sounds like I'm not really opening up on what I, I value but like um, I value I, of concealing yeah <laughs> <laughs> I, va I value life I value life I value longevity I value uh, yeah, just uh, just the opportunity, just being alive, right? Like, and I think if you, like that's kind of a good way to be positive because then you can sort of like appreciate and have gratitudes about uh, that sort of thing and appreciate things. 
but yeah, the three things I don't know, but like basically it starts with that, that I just kind of appreciate the 70, 80 years, like, you know, like we're, we're tiny little things in whatever time frame. And who, who's your, who was your mentor while growing up? Made you like think like linking fitness and business together? Did anyone like help you do that? Not really, and I think um, uh, mentors, not really, but you know when football players, I love football, right? So when football yeah. players become good managers, people try and say they were like that other manager, but actually if they pay, played in one club and there's seven managers or in seven clubs, they learned from all those managers. You know, I worked with seven agencies and I learned from good role models in each of those agencies. Um, I have people on my board, I have good friends in the industry. It's that thing of surround, surrounding yourself with interesting people. So some of them would be mentors for two or three years, not just role models, some of them it would be specifically people I would ask for a lot of advice. Do you feel like all these sacrifices and everything that you've uh, done in your previous years, did it pay off? Or is there more to come and you're still sacrificing? It definitely both. So it definitely paid off, 100% paid off, because uh, I believe the harder you work today, the more you'll be rewarded tomorrow. Going back to that compound thing of effort, and 100% those 10 years on no money in Dublin and London, like I, when I came to Dubai, I didn't have money, right? Like, I, luckily I had a good promotion and a good job, but I didn't have any money, right? Like, luckily I've come from a decent enough background and I wasn't like on a privilege. I'm not like saying that, like, but, uh, but I, didn't, I didn't have any, like, it, it wasn't paying off. And I could have looked at other people my age and went, ah, oh, you know, like you guys are, are younger than I was then, but I was late 20s and I could have been like, uh, what if I joined a tech startup? I could have made shares. Or what if I started my own startup? I could have, I could have, yeah. right? But and I, I could have had some regrets. Like one of my friends, I, I almost joined it and set up a social media agency in 2008 in Dublin. And he sold it for a couple million euro uh, later. I could have regrets, but I didn't because in those few years, I moved to London, less money, but I was exposed. And when I moved to London, I realized, hang on, I have all the skills, all these like SEO affiliate, like social media widgets, like, and, and these guys, there's just loads of them, so they don't really know how to do it. And I know how to do all this stuff. So that gave me more confidence. They were suave London ad execs, but I was able to sort of- Learn from them. Yeah, not necessarily just learn from them, but just not have the inferior complex from afar. Like once I was working with them, I realized, hang on, they, they look smart and they talk well, but they know much less than me. They're marketeers at the end of the day. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I'm just uh, curious, like, uh, what are the key changes or shifts that you've seen from the digital or social media space from the early days in 2010 up until uh, now? Yeah, we kind of touched on it there with the blogging thing, but there's just so many and it's so fast. Yeah. Like, we think we're in a short form year. Like, you know, it is a short form year. It's a TikTok year, right? And TikTok's killing Instagram. And it really will kill Instagram. Like, now, now the so, audience is there. You heard it first, guys. What? First? TikTok's <laughs> to the moon. <laughs> I would disagree with you on that, though. Okay, okay, go ahead. How? Because... Instagram, like Meta is too big to fail at that point. Fair, hear me, fair, right? Like Meta is, Meta has brilliant engineers and it's a brilliant platform and they're self-serve. But at the moment, at the moment, advertising money. So, uh, you know, ByteDance or, or whatever isn't public. So we don't know how much money TikTok are making, but we have an idea. And it's not as much as Meta or Facebook are making. When I said it will kill it, it's because now it's, the kids are definitely on it and the audience is there, but the brands aren't yet. And it's like what we were talking about, the depth of the platform, dancing versus the depth of the platform, right? And, you know, Facebook was was for connecting... Uh, University students yeah, together, yeah. Yeah, it was face match. It was a dating platform, basically, in, in other ways. So these things evolve and TikTok will evolve. It'll get more depth. And because they're so good at product, like they're really good at building out features really fast. And they'll get into crypto a lot faster than other guys will. Like, uh, I'm sure they will. Like, because they're brilliant at features and you have to. Like, the ones that don't innovate with product suffer. 18 months ago, I was listening to a, a creator podcast and they asked her, a really good TikToker, they were like, oh, you're really big on YouTube as well. How did that happen? And it wasn't like, oh, I started YouTube in 2014 or whatever. The reason it happened is because 
she was in pandemic TikTok, and during the pandemic, or a few months later, uh, TikTok was going to be sold to bloody Walmart or something because of all this China-US stuff, right? And that's just a reminder. That's only a year or two ago that people didn't think that TikTok was going to go to the moon. Now we do. We sit here and we think it will, just like we don't think Instagram is going to die. And that's the answer. Things just move so fast. Um, last two questions because we're almost out of time. Um, number one is, if you would write a book about your life, what would the title be? And number two, what are your future plans and what is your um, advice that you're going to share with young um, entrepreneurs and investors, etc.? Yeah, um, I don't believe in legacy. I don't, wouldn't make it about me. If I would write a book, I would write about Augustus, the company, and I would tell the culture of the company and the story. Um, I don't have a name for it. When I was in agencies in the Middle East, I was thinking behind agency lines, like behind enemy lines, and talking about it in that way. But I definitely would like to do something on Augustus and as a company in the future, and to share the things that I've learned about business, to share what, you know, how to make, and this is the second answer, but, you know, business, I love business because, you know, you can create your own journey. I love it because you don't have to retire. And it, I think I said this in the last podcast, but business is the ultimate sport. And I think um, I love it because of that, uh, in that way. But I also love it that if you do good, you can create your own narrative. So Mr. Richard, for <laughs> a, last, last question. For a guy that has a lot of me media agencies, are you on TikTok? I have a TikTok. Yeah. You have a TikTok? Yeah, I'm not good at it though, but I post some fitness videos and I post some clips there, yeah. But no, I'm, I, I, it actually can you know, you know what? And you're an amazing TikToker, but like, I never really spent hours on YouTube in the last 15 years. I was never really a YouTube person. I like audio books. I love Twitter. And I, I really, like I'm on Twitter. If you look, I joined Twitter 14 years ago and I think I've used it every day, right? That's a long time. So like, and I use Instagram mainly for work now for Instagram, but like, um, no, I, I don't think I'm personally going to go, I don't, I don't also do the personal branding thing too much because it's more about Augustus and more about the business. So I don't necessarily need to, but all our brands are. I think we've about, I think we've about 15 TikTok accounts and um, we've hired like TikTokers in Cairo just to do TikTok. Uh, you know, we've braced TikTok, but our clients aren't on TikTok yet. They're not advertising. Like Love in Dubai's Instagram is booked every day for takeovers. Clients aren't yet. So I see the way I steer it back to Augustus and business. It's not a deflection, it's, it's actual an answer. Like, you know, but I love what you do. I love like, the creative things and um, I should be on it more because I would see more trends. Like, that's why I should be on it to, as, a, as, as a watcher, not a doer. We got you something. Okay. We got your presence, yeah. Okay. It's custom made. Wow. And it's part of our... Like I answered that last question wrong now. <laughs> <laughs> No, it's nothing to do with TikTok. It's custom made. Oh, amazing. Part of our line. Oh, do you have an NFT project? Uh, yeah. More like a... It's supposed to look like me. <laughs> it's you. So, uh, oh, that's awesome. We made it. Be, we, know, we know you run triathlon. This is so great. You hat, you have your... Uh, What's the B for? That's, that's our brand that's logo. Very cool. Oh, the bottle flip. <laughs> Thank Thanks a so lot, much, guys. Uh, yeah. For accepting being a guest on our show. Uh, it was lovely getting to a deep insight into the media industry. Yeah. And uh, I'll leave it to Ayman to go for the outro. Don't forget guys, like, comment, comment below the people you want to see next. We'll ask them what do they really do for a living. And thank you so much for Thanks, having Simon. you. Thanks guys. Thank Good you shot. guys. Peace out. Thanks for coming in. <laughs>